Hey all, welcome to this week's favorite collection here at the CIO PCC. This week I'm going to look at the purple section. Now, the purple section, see all of this in front here? The purple section has this huge five tower section in front of the purple and yellow. So, when we do uh, the yellow, I'm going to do all of the Simpsons, which will run down a bit towards purple. So today I'm doing just a small section down here towards the end of the tower and mostly the wall. Purple is, of course, cartoons. Non-Simpsons cartoons, but there are other cartoons in the yellow section, too. It's just that that's predominantly Simpsons. And Simpsons bleeds down here a bit, too, as you can see with the sign and the purple side here. As well as one of the many clocks that I have of the Simpsons. Let's start up on the top. Again, 22-inch shelves up there. You can put a lot of cool, bigger things. Stuff you haven't opened. Here we have the South Park. McFarland did these various and sundry uh, building sets. Trying to get on the Lego game, I guess. Uh, they did a few. They did the South Park. They did Walking Dead. They did uh, Rick and Morty. They didn't last. Next up, we have some boxed examples of some stuff you'll see down below. I like to have, like, the uh, Scary Terry there or the Aqua Teen Hunger Force pack. At least one carded example of a line. Here we have Bob's Burgers. The only one I don't have loose. They're all carded there. I don't have a loose Louise. I've got to get one of her. The carded Futurama, and then we get into some of the carded South Park. The ones in back, those are Mezco. Those are some of the variants they did. They have done many variants, and in front is the Tail Enders from uh, Mirage. When they did their line, that's the last wave they did. And even the Arvark from uh, Palisades. Now, as we're going around, the other thing I want to mention is many of the series, there's the Tick, Carded and loose with some uh, Super 7 Ultimates up there at the top for Rin and Stimpy. Uh, I have done favorite collection videos on many of these. So if you see something here in the purple section like Ren and Stimpy or Rick and Morty and you want to know more, search for one of my favorite collection videos. Speaking of Ren and Stimpy, let's move down to some more stuff. This is the Ren and Stimpy shelf. Those uh, busts there at the beginning are pretty hard to come by. Those are done by Palisades, and they're called their micro busts. They did them in very low numbers. Billy West signed package. I don't do too many signed items, but I have a handful. And then some of the first wave of these figures, including a uh, prototype Mr. Horse. You'll notice his jacket color is different, as is the kind of... Notice the blue on, the fr on these three, four... And this is the lighter blue with a different jacket color. That's a prototype of the line in back. That's another prototype of Stimpy. That's a 150% larger. This is more the size of the Stimpy figure. That's a larger version that was a prototype. And as we get down here, we get into some really cool prototypes. That's uh, up the Stimpy in front. That was... Uh, going to be in the second series. You'll notice he's kind of set up with the arms to have a suit on. He was going to have a tuxedo and come with a muddy mud skipper. While the rest of the ones across the bottom, those are the more normal releases. Back here in back, we have on the bottom row, the uh, logs. Now they did a log packaged like this with various figures. They did a few logs, oh, like the glow-in-the-dark one there, the clear one, you can see, uh, that were exclusives to certain shows or stuff. That's the Wave 1 down there in the bottom. You'll see a few more that filled out Wave 1 uh, mixed in with the figures. Wave 2 is at the top, the gray ones. Those, were the, those are seven of the eight they had planned for the second wave. Unfortunately, I do not have the eighth prototype. You'll notice there is an open space there. But these are all pretty cool. versions that they were going to do and then of course we have the huge kowalski this was a series two figure as well at about 150 percent great figure so there's a lot of prototypes let's swing around and see some of the earlier ren and stimpy stuff fun fact those ren and stimpy carded action figures are the first action figures i ever kept carded that was a turning point in my collecting some ren and stimpy ornaments and now we're going to get into some more Palisades. Up there at the top, we have some Bob's Burgers clips. These hangers were, are kind of popular. 
I've done a few different waves of those things and some Bob's Burgers ornaments. But down here we have the Pink Panther from Palisades. All the ones they did, including the different versions of the man. And Inspector Clouseau. Then we've run into a bunch of uh, uh, fairly odd parents, including some prototypes. And test shots, mostly done at 150%. Some of them are quite unique. Especially the lipsticks, you'll notice they did in a couple different sizes. They tested some out and then they didn't finish with those, as well as the fish. You'll notice the fish come in a couple different sizes. They were thinking about that. Palisades also did the Critaz. And there's some uh, exclusives there. The pig in front is the, uh, not exclusives, but prototypes. Hard copy. Here you can see the heads at different stages in the prototyping process from initial sculpts to hard copy. And those are the Paz Burgers figures. I said I'm missing Louise. All right, so move one down shelf again. Let's look down here at the end. We have a, some keychains, some magnets for hang on the stick on the wall. And this is the South Park shelf. So let's zoom in a little bit on the first top part. There's a lot of the stuff from Mirage is on this shelf. While well, we've gotten several Satan figures, that right there is one of the only God figures I have in my collection. And we start mixing in with the Mirage some of the uh, Mezco. And Mezco did a terrific job with this line, giving us quite a few of the characters. That's Futurama, of course. We'll get that in a minute. Let's finish up with South Park, just so you can see the whole set before we swing down and around. These are all Mezco. Scale was a little better than the Mirage. And right here in front, we have some of the buttons. You're going to see that I have a lot of buttons around in the collections. I did do a favorite collection video just on buttons. So if you're interested in those, search that one up. Some of the PVCs. I don't do Kid Robot. There's just too much when you start getting into that. Likewise, I don't do Funko. For the most part, you'll see a handful of Funkos in this section, which I will explain when we get down there. Let's do the other half of that shelf. This is the Futurama half. And as I said, there's Destructo and Gender Bender in the corner there. Some of the Christmas ornaments. There's another signed item from Claiborne Moore. I don't think I have very many signed items, but then again, maybe I should do a top 10, my 10 favorite signed items. I have at least 10. Christmas card from the uh, folks at uh, Toynami with the, uh, or actually from more, it's from more action collectibles. They sent me that prototype on Christmas, hard copy bender. And that's the gold version. It is really nothing but, so that's the first one that Toynami did, but it's really nothing but exactly the same uh, as the bendy armed uh, version that was done by uh, more action collectibles. What they did is they just, they wanted to get something out for Comic-Con as quickly as possible. So they released it um, boxed. They just had them run a few in, off the old molds and then released it boxed until they could do their own bender. If you'd like to be able to know how to tell the difference, because both had bendy arms, you can tell the difference looking at the loose ones. Take a look at, like on King Bender here, you notice that the uh, uh, door on the front is rounded corners, a little wider at the top, a little narrower at the bottom. That's your telltale sign. Notice here, square corners. That's the, uh, and as we come down here, that's the more action collectible. More also did, uh, you know, the whole line. Well, what they had one series. Here they are, both carded and loose. I'm missing my loose kill all humans. See, the carded one had a, an apron that says kill all humans. But uh, for some reason, I can't find that. That got lost in all the moves between storage. That kind of happens. Uh, Zap Brannigan's uh, 
space gun there is one of my most recent releases. I didn't know that came out when it came out, so I had to hunt it up on eBay recently when I found out about its existence. And we come down around here and we finish up Futurama. Pop out people in back, some of the clickers, and the tin figures from Rocket USA. So now we get into another really great line, Palisades Invader Zim. I don't think we're ever, ever, ever going to get anything that's cool again from this particular license. I love the show, and Palisades did a wonderful job. This is a complete collection, including the uh, the uh, box DVD set that came with the figure. Came with the Gur. There's actually a loose Gur there, too. I have this collection completely loose. And then I have most of it, so, yeah, at least half, carded as well. Now, notice these three that are on the bases. These three... Ms. Bitters, Zim. These are actually prototypes. So, for example, Zim's head there on that is is supposed to be the Zim to the right. You'll notice the eyes are painted a different color and are not translucent. And the head is about 150% the size of the regular head put on that base. It was used for things like Toy Fair. Likewise, T-shirt's different, head's larger. Eyes are a little different. This was done. And then Miss Bitter as well. She had boots on the prototype. This is the version that's behind her here. The bun was different. So that's kind of like the signature of what I like when I'm collecting prototypes. Is uh, do I have something that I can get that has never been produced? Or if it was produced, it was radically different than the final product. Likewise, this hard copy down here at the end of the living room playset. This, the background is very different. The placement of the table is different. Uh, it's, it's quite different from the final product. <clears throat> so, last shelf in the purple swall is Rick and Morty. And you're going to see some Gravity Falls here. This Gravity Falls stuff, let's kind of come down here a bit. This Gravity Falls stuff is really cool. These are hard to come by. There's a box set that has a couple more of the figures that I do not have that I wish I had. Those, But those... Figures are really the only ones ever produced for it. Like I said, uh, McFarland did those Rick and Morty, those building sets for that as well, not just the South Park. Some robot chicken. And now we're going to get into the um, full-on really cool, great Rick and Mortys. This is Mondo. Mondo did these. These are six scale. And I really love these. These are really well done. Some Hot Wheels in the back there. Including both Mr. Meeseeks. The, uh, I do do Funko figures, actual action figures. When I say Funko, I'm talking about pops I don't do. And you'll see this is that Funko line of Rick and Morty. There's a couple of Mego back there. Rick and Morty's license, I tend to buy what I can find when I can find it because we don't get a lot of cool stuff. So there's some Christmas ornaments. Got a couple of good portal guns. And in a minute, we'll talk about Adult Swim, which is down around the other way, but when it, I kind of skipped some of this bottom shelf here the first time through. So in these uh, Funko minifigures, mystery figures, I am still missing three. There's two Mesix variants, and there is that snake alien that they did that I'm still missing. But it's nice to have collections like this that you can keep an eye out for and collect a little at a time. Swing back at the bottom shelf over here. As I said, we've got the Adult Swim stuff. Again, if you want to see any of this stuff in greater detail or more discussion, please feel free to look for the favorite collection video. Most all of these have a favorite, favorite collection video. Unproduced prototypes, there's two of them. Uh, uh, Mentok, took me a while there to come up with that. Mentok is a hard copy, while uh, uh, Birdman's uh, sidekick here, whose name is... Uh, is escaping me is a paint master neither of those were ever produced we're going to get into some earthworm gym here now these are not the new ones that i am looking forward to and those are all going to get moved around the carded ones will probably get opened up and i will add in the new ones the new series another unproduced prototype carl aqua teen hunger force 
and some an excellent example of the process that's a carved solid soap carving um, kind of a soapstone material the hard copy where you can take all the parts apart and then the final figures up there so let's stick with the floor we have some more tick stuff that was too big to fit on a regular shelf so it all comes down here some rick and morty things Jord liquor and jimmy the idiot boy Jimmy's back over there too. Now you'll see some, some pops. And most of these pops, there's a few that are Rick and Morty, but most of these pops are going to be things I'm not going to ever get any other way. Like Solar Opposites. Like Big Mouth. These are lines that like disenchantment. And we we're just never going to see these as action figures, and so I broke down and bought them. Because they're some of my favorite shows. Some more South Park. If you recognize Santa Claus, you get uh, extra, extra, extra points times 10. I don't have anything else from the bee movie, but I just thought that that was so cool that there was a flying bee, radio control bee. And we finish down here with a few more of the games. Bob's Burgers, Simpsons, games. So, oh, let's stand back up and talk about the tower in front. If you're still with me, most of what we're going to talk about on the tower in front is going to be the Muppets. I have a complete carded collection of the Muppets and an almost complete loose collection. I will point out what I don't have loose when we get to it. So up at the top, you start in back, there's boxed play sets. In front, there's carded figures all the way around the top. Like I said, every one of these, except for the uh, for uh, two, you're going to see loose as well. So, and we'll come around this side. We'll start to see some of the mega figures and some of the other loose figures. To the right is going to be the diamond select stuff. And I'm pointing out these Simpsons games, which if you saw the uh, video about my games you know what's back there again i've done some terrific favorite collection videos on these so you can certainly check those out as well but the red cards that's the early stuff there in front we have the uh wedding set that i do not have loose i only have one uh, i have it boxed that would probably break my heart if i opened one up because that seems kind of a waste for those people who want mint on card and mint box collections. Lots and lots and lots of the exclusives. Some of the minifigures. I wasn't as exacting with those. I either have them carded or boxed most of the time. And now on this side, we'll get into the sideshow busts. These are really gorgeous. Sideshow has not been known for busts for a very long time, but the ones they did for The Simpsons and The Muppets and Star Trek are actually really great busts. Really underappreciated. I don't know if you can find them these days, but they're out there. Here are the tin Muppets. These all, again, you'll see loose versions down below, but these were produced by um, Palisades in conjunction with Toy Fair. And Toy Fair came and went off and did a couple of their own with some extra stock. The silver tin stuff, which you also saw over with uh, Ren and Stimpy or Futurama. Those shelves, Ren and Stimpy in particular, there was a set, one of them over there. Uh, those are the Palisades Collectors Club. And there's always a figure in there now. Let's come on down to the Muppets. We're going to start and be a little more split the shelf into the... Upper and lower part, there's the Jim Henson figure. So now we're getting into the loose figures, but most of these are going to be prototypes or test shots in this area. The Santa is a, pro, a test shot with prototype, you know, it's a paint paint shot, paint master. These are just test shots here in front of various figures. The one that's really cool, of course, is uh, Bert in back. This is the soft clay sculpture that was intended to be used to create the original figure for them. 
Definitely one of a kind item there. Here we have toilet head animal. See his hair? This is the hair that was actually released a little wilder. So around the office at Palisades, he got to be known as the toilet head. Let's take a step down before we go around the corner and look at the stuff that was in the front. Much of the band, you're going to see a whole other second band since they did variants of those guys. The uh, Dr. Teeth sign, variant colors. It's not the colors they went with. These are all hard copies. They come completely apart. And then we got some more unproduced stuff from Sesame Street. We'll finish up with all the versions of Uncle Deadly over here. One of my favorite characters. So we were saying we were going to come down around this side. Here we have a Hallmark ornament. See, there's not as much up there as this Miss Piggy looking at herself in the mirror. Uh, that's a Fraggle Rock. Those we still, that's the only one we've got seen released so far, but we're supposed to get quite a few more that are still out on order. I haven't seen him yet, but they're supposed to be coming. There's Ralph in the black tuxedo that came with the piano. Sweetum is one of my all-time favorites, as well as the Adventure Kermit. A couple of different Adventure Kermits. I have one in the other, a slightly different paint variation of the pants, uh, over in with Indiana Jones. And now we have play sets filled with figures. There's that whole set of the uh, band again those are the regular colors pigs in space with some more figures in front and back the muppets lab various versions of those characters and we come around and we have the my favorite of the play sets swedish chef kitchen with some different versions of the swedish chef I'm going to show you this corner, even though it's not Muppets, because that'll finish off that tower. These are the uh, Venture Brothers, which go down that way. And we will talk about those more when we swing around that way. As well as this end down here with some uh, King of the Hill and Family Guy. Now in back, we have more carded figures, but on the front shelf, we have the loose figures. All the guy smileys. And like I said, on the back of this shelf are all of the carded stuff. This is one of only two collections I have that is complete carded. And so that's why I've displayed them all. It's kind of a unique thing for me. And there's the only other figure I have only carded. The bagged white tuxedo Ralph. Uh, I would like to have a loose one. I'd more than love to have a loose one. The problem is I don't really want to open up the, you know, it's really they're only open out there. And if you're somebody who is a mint on card collector, it's kind of a bummer if somebody comes along and opens one of those up at this point. It would be different if it was brand new. Behind there is a nice letter that talks about um, when they when they gave out the one, uh, uh, the tuxedo uh, 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 Gonzo. Remember the uh, dream date Gonzo that was put out because of a celebration for Mike Horn at Palisades? And these are all done with from different uh, either activities or companies. You'll notice the Happy Holidays Kermit, the one to the right, that was the one that the Palisades did, and they rebagged it with a new header card there from the Jim Henson uh, Company for Christmas. And I love that card behind him there is my Christmas card from the Henson Company that year, and they gave that to me. Oh, let's keep going around. We just finished up over here on this particular shelf. We don't want to abandon it and as we come down around you're going to see the rarest of the uh of the original carded line not one of the exclusives just something that was supposed to be released and didn't get released widely it is gonzo with bernice on the card now gonzo with bernice if you look way up there that's gonzo with bernice there in the blue box. They did release it eventually as a Wizard World exclusive. But this version here was supposed to be a Target exclusive. They made 10 cases uh, that had 12 each. So they made 120 of them. 
and they were never actually sold at stores. So I think that's about as rare as you can get. Even with some of the show exclusives, obviously, are way more than that. Now, on this shelf here, we get the Diamond Select stuff. At least to date. I mean, got some, there's a few things they still got on pre-order out there. And around this shelf, we finish up with Super Grover. Now, Super Grover came this way. This is his hatted head with the telephone booth. This is his uh, Super Grover version. That is a uh, unopened box set uh, uh, to show the terrific Alex Ross art on the front. And down here, we have two prototype heads. They thought about doing him without a hat like that and have the hat removable. And they also thought about this color combination for that, which, as you can see, is not how they went in the end. So those are prototypes. Here we have the final shelf. And we're going to come down around. There's some more Muppets in back as uh, Star Wars. But we're coming around this line by McFarlane for Corpse Bride. Another one of those underrated lines. I bet you can pick up pretty cheap these days. Some of the 12-inch dolls. The three mini busts, man, I wish these had kept going. These mini busts are really nice. They were by Gentle Giant. But unfortunately, they did just the four, the bride and the three characters with her. And uh, that was the end of it. We get into some Coraline. All of the Coraline figures that uh, NECA did. As well as in front of there, that's that uh, Frankenweenie. It's kind of a... <clears throat> stop motion shelf because as we come along you can see the core line you saw it over there with the the uh, uh sky starry pattern core line that's the comic-con version right there from 2009 they're re-releasing that right now but the uh, i don't expect the box ones to go down too much in value and on this side we have some more odds and ends this is all wallace and gromit stuff the uh, Paranorman stuff, did, it was very little of it. You can see I have four of the sets in back there. These are hard to come by. Those are all Comic-Con exclusives. There was, and they have the glow-in-the-dark. There were some non-glow-in-the-dark ones, but they're hard to come by. There's the phone I had in my bedroom when I was a kid. Snoopy, rotary dial. And on this shelf, we have Scooby-Doo. Some of it boxed, lots of it loose. I'm not a huge Scooby-Doo fan, but I do like these action figures. I thought they did a nice job with them. Likewise with Chicken Run, the original show, as you can see, there's another figure up there on the box. It was pretty cool. Decent line. Beavis and Butthead they did from uh, more action collectibles. And we got some space over here, so some future editions, including uh, those Five Points Adams Family. On the floor, there's the chicken fries. There's an advertisement for Star Wars. There's a Millennium Falcon. That's the more recent one that they did, oh, what, two, three years ago? The other version of it that was more, it was older, is up there hanging from the ceiling. Storage, storage, storage. We got some Corpse Bride plush. And we have some signage. Simpsons signage down along the bottom. So that kind of gets you through the purple section. There's more of that tower, of course, and we'll actually do some crossover, unavoidable crossover between the two as we look at the yellow section. Uh, but until next week, that was a long 30 minutes you sat through. I appreciate it. Make sure you subscribe and have a great collecting week.